Well, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to um, first uh, start by saying that buildings at this scale are, are actually not a product of a single mind, but it's a, it's a product of a collaborative process of many, many individuals. And today, uh, as the design director, uh, myself and, and Mark is the structural director, we're just part of this group and uh, we'll be the spokespeople, uh, but it's actually a, you know, a larger group that has spent a lot of uh, years and, and time designing this tower. And um, to that effect, I'd like also say is all great projects are done by great clients. And uh, Alhambra is no exception to this. And we were really uh, lucky to have Alhambra Real Estate Corporation uh, supporting uh, the design, having great design aspirations that contributed to what it, the tower became uh, today. And uh, Mr. Khalid Al Altman is, uh, you know, he traveled all the way from Kuwait, and uh, I welcome him to CTBH uh, Symposium and to Chicago today. And. Um, and of course, there is an array of uh, consultants, but I'd also like to say that we work with a great uh, contractor, um, which is the Ahmadiyya Contracting Com Company in, in, in Kuwait, that actually uh, work with us and um, at all levels uh, to, to you know, raise to the occasion and, and uh, help this get built. Um, Kuwait is a very strategic, uh, geopolitically in a very strategic location and uh, early 2000 and uh, you know as, as we moved on in early 2000 the geo geopolitical events and there kind of uh, started a, a building boom in, in downtown uh, Kuwait City and uh, when we first visited, visited the site in uh, 2004 2005 end of uh, 2004 beginning of 2005 there was already a construction there uh, for a 40-story building, and just about that time, the city uh, wanted to uh, raise the uh, height limits up to um, 400 meters plus, and that's when uh, SOM got involved. Um, that, of course, uh, set certain parameters of the site. Uh, one is the location of the building, um, adjacent to the shopping mall. That was uh, something that we had to work with. And the other thing was the schedule. And one thing that the ownership asks us is, is how fast could you guys give the foundations? Because we had a, a whole a crew of uh, construction workers on the site. And uh, all our teams worked um, as fast uh, and as we can. And uh, we did this job in a really sort of a fast track fashion. Um, now, and the outcome of that is, is this project. I'd like to walk you through uh, a couple of the uh, conceptual uh, parts of the design. One is the location. And like all great buildings, uh, we've spent a lot of time in Kuwait City understanding. And SOM has worked in, in Kuwait uh, for many decades. And um, we have a lot of uh, projects there. When we visited the site, and the site's uh, unique location at the, the tip of the uh, old uh, city, the peninsula, has panoramic views of the, the Gulf. And uh, it almost sits like a lighthouse, if you will at the tip of the peninsula, and it's very visible along the corniche, uh, along the water. And um, of course, one of the advantages of the site is the, the predominant views are towards the north. And um, if you actually sort of look at the view cone, and uh, which uh, you know helps in a, in a harsh desert climate where uh, the uh, solar loads are very significant, and that also became the inspiration, if you will, of the project, to design something parametrically that responds uh, to maximizing views, uh, minimizing the solar heat gains, and also creating a, an iconic landmark in this uh, a very unique location. And the result of that is, is this tower. This is a view from the Corniche looking, um, looking at the tower. And a more close-up view you could see. Um, and I would uh, discuss a little bit of the genesis of the form. Um, like I said, the views are predominantly towards the north. And you know, like all uh, complex projects, uh, there are uh, varying criteria that one uh, has to work with. And in this case, uh, we uh, had to provide a 2,200 square meter uh, floor plate, about 12 meter lease span, and with the site that I showed you that's restricted by um, you know, the, the adjacent shopping mall. So throughout that process, and when we did a, a whole uh, array of analysis, we found out that uh, rather than cutting a quarter of the floor plate, which we need to in a consistent way, 
if we do cut it in a way that moves from uh, one corner of the building to the other, actually not only it optimizes solar exposure, but also helped uh, the lateral uh, behavior of the building in, in, uh, in wind. Uh, and um, Mark is going to talk more about that. But you can see basically the genesis of the form takes from a square donut 12 meter least span and cuts a quarter of the floor plate. And the resultant uh, geometry and the floor plate is very efficient. You see a 12 meter uh, least span and a center core. And the building stack basically, uh, like a lot of uh, super tall buildings, uh, utilizes the strategy of sky lobbies, acts as three buildings uh, on top of each other, uh, a magnificent lobby in the entrance and a sky garden at the top. And this is sort of unique because uh, a lot of buildings, uh, you know, how you uh, start a, a, a super tall building, how it meets the ground, and how it ends has always been a discussion when you design these structures. And when you do end, uh, you know, you have to deal with the mechanical systems. And, and we had the opportunity to put our cooling towers to the podium, so it actually enabled us to do uh, end the tower with a public space. And we actually didn't uh, put a a spire or an antenna with whether we would like to end the tower with a space that uh, gave back the views to, to the Kuwait, uh, Kuwait city. And well, you know, I, I'll say that the, the concept for this, this tower really started um, right away from, from the very beginning. We had this empty uh, site and we had a conceptual form that we were very interested in and, and a response to the site. But I think what we enjoyed in the very beginning was um, was a was a dialogue about opportunity and what we could perhaps do with this very complicated form in, in a way that was efficient resisted load of course uh, gravity lateral loads winds uh, predominantly but also um, using the structure to do more and and we used the structure on the southern facade to control heat gain um, so this integrated idea was one that that took that form, took those walls, and, and combined them with a rep, repetition of floor-by-floor floor construction on three of the other sides. So you'll see that the frame on the three sides are, are very regular, and it's the southern exposure and it's the central core that, that forms the, the, the complex uh, shape. Um, in plan, it's, it's, it's an idea that largely uses reinforced concrete. Um, the, the columns are typically spaced at six meters on center around the, the perimeter. We, we did use some steel at the base of the building, um, at the lobby space, and to control very high loads, very high concentrations of loads just above the foundations. Um, but what's important is, is, is we really try to look at this holistically, taking that southern face, which is on the right side of your, uh, the screen, and combining that with that center box, that rectangular box uh, that, that circled the, the service areas. Um, so a diagram of this um, uh, three-dimensionally. And, it, you know, the control of forces, we had um, sloping walls, so we had to manage forces through diaphragms, ties uh, that resolve themselves locally and then globally back toward, um, toward the central core of the building. Um, it, it, it was one of um, evolution. I, I think that um, it, the collaboration of, of, of the integration of these kinds of, uh, I'll say, regular forms and complex forms came together. Um, uh, on this, and you can see it uh, very clearly on this face, and you can imagine the, the force transfers that I just showed you um, as those columns met the walls. Um, it, it was a, a close collaboration, not only with our client, but the contractor, the forming system uh, contractor, which was done by Perry, um, and the idea that we could parametrically model this form and break it down into segments. The part of the concept of this building, as Ibars mentioned, was, was about stacking. Um, perhaps a masonry, more of a masonry concept, but we used that for the walls. So we created paneled, uh, a panelized system that could stack, um, form and stack, to, to create this complex shape. So there were adjustments made in, in elevation and in plan as we built the building uh, to create the overall form, and you can see that it's not exact. Um, it's, uh, it's a segmented approach, but gets very close to, to, the, to, to the true form. And um, 
we always find it a little difficult to present this with Mark, so we kind of have to keep switching back and forth. The concepts are so integrated. Um, now, one of the things about, again, um, taking advantage of uh, this, uh, I'll call the south wall, which is basically part of the, the structural system. It's a very thick wall, and it, um, it acts uh, like a, a thermal storage because of its, uh, its thermal mass. Um, when you actually look at the floor plan, all the uh, everybody comes off the elevators and through the central corridor, and they do have a framed view of Kuwait City looking back. And basically, the windows at the south are shaped to refer back. Like when you're standing in the center center of the elevator lobby, you have a a framed view. But when you're walking along that corridor, you see the light that is coming from a mysterious source. And that's again, it's a very uh, I would say a very Middle Eastern concept. There is a sense of light and 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 um, sort of color sensibility here that you see in uh, old ancient structures where uh, they were built truly really masonry. And in this case, I would call it more of a stereotomic form versus a tectonic form, where there is a large mass that we chiseled out these uh, light cracks, if you will, that allows the uh, light to penetrate in. But at the same time, these are the uh, part of the superstructure of the, the building. And you can see here, looking up uh, to the void of the uh, tower, the stagger pattern of, the, uh, of these windows. So, I mean, this wasn't easy. And, I, and when we first looked at this, you could give up and, and, and use you know, columns or you can use rectangular walls. You can infill it with infill panels. You can do the same thing that you see here um, done in uh, concrete, perhaps much easier than those other other techniques. But we fought for the idea that it was completely holistic, and and we would take on from an engineering point of view high strike stress concentrations with these uh, tight corners, and and we would create this engineered um, facade that 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 really didn't allow direct sunlight to come into the space. So uh, heat gain was was controlled, um, and and very importantly, um, we we considered it. it in another way, we considered it as a diagonalization. If you look carefully along the, the length of these openings as it projects up to the left, you'll see that, in fact, you have a very strong banding, almost a, a bracing system that's inherent in this wall um, on the diagonal rather than just um, uh, in elevation and, and in plan. So those solid elements of concrete were, 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 were areas of load path that we could bring uh, forces down uh, through the walls and into the foundations. And like I said in the beginning, uh, how, how buildings meet the ground is always a, a challenge. And uh, when it comes to super tall towers, it, it's uh, the, the, the challenge compounds. Because there is, well, there is a, a significant amount of population that's coming down uh, comparatively a very small footprint. And the, all the demands are high at the ground. The structure wants to be big. You know, everyone's coming in at lunchtime. They want to go out. and. Um, there is a uh, building infrastructure, uh, the services are coming through. So there's a lot of things that are fighting each other. And how do you create a, a grand space, uh, like a, let's say like a train station, but, but you have the burdens of the, of the you know, 400 meter structure sitting on top of you. And you know, throughout the life of this project, every concept we did come up with is an integration of uh, engineering. And, and in this case, of course, uh, we had to come up with something that actually uh, solved this uh, challenge in a way that it actually became a, a, an opportunity, a design opportunity for the project. And um, the net really outcome of this is uh, what I will call is a lamella concrete structure that actually took all these forces and tied them together and created um, a magnificent space at the, the base of the tower that signifies, again, this public realm when a building meets the ground, it's important. It, it, it welcomes the city in because you really do want that. And these are significant structures and they kind of should contribute to the urban fabric rather than negate it. And uh, we have spent significant amount of time. And I think um, when you go to Kuwait City, you do see uh, this uh, great space. And uh, again, I will just sort of give that to you. Um, Mark, quickly to explain the. So for those of you that are structural engineers um, in the room, 
when an architect comes to and says they, they need a 24 meter clear lobby and a 415 uh, meter tall building, you, you start to get you know a little sort of shaky about what you're going to do. And, and we, by the way, there's no brace. We don't want any direct bracing, nothing tying directly back to the core. And we want the columns to flare uh, to the outside. So what we did is we, we as Jaibars talked about this, we, we thought of it as an opportunity. Um, with the flare columns, the elements that came on the outside of the building had a load capacity. And these two lines that you see, the blue line is the target line for capacity of, I'll say, the columns at the perimeter. And we were far, far below that, that target capacity. So what we did is we started to look at integrating um, uh, bracing elements into the, the facade first on the, on the outside of the building, um, largely in concrete with some structural steel on those elements. And then we looked at taking elements back toward the core. And as you can see, the, the capacity, the, the buckling capacity of those columns is increasing uh, a bit, but not enough to, to overcome the capacity that we're looking for. We then introduced this lamella structure with reinforced concrete that formed the ceiling of the lobby space and gave us great capacity, both uh, 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 in, in plan, uh, side to side, and, and back toward, uh, packed toward the core. Uh, we modeled it uh, carefully. We did a nonlinear analysis of, of a Buckley analysis of, of the, the, the elements. We, we looked at it um, geometrically in terms of uh, the shape, and, uh, size, geometry uh, of the entire system, and, and we got pretty close to, to what was finally, uh, finally built. I'll just say a couple of more things. Um, you, you know, it's, it's about a definition beyond the analysis. So taking that definition and creating forming systems that, that can be used that, and built uh, was what we did here. And we pulled these geometries straight across uh, to the contractor um, and, and created um, a, a definition that could be directly used for the forming systems on the site. And, and the net outcome of all this is a space that is really driven by the forces that act on the building. It's like literally the root of the tree of a building. There's nothing here that is redundant. There is nothing here that's decorative. That is really a generative form that uh, through, you know, integration of uh, structural engineering and architecture that created a space, a public space of a, of I would say the, the most significant building in Kuwait City that welcomes people and, and creates this this fabulous moment where you kind of see, again, like for instance, this is my favorite picture actually. You can see the, the light coming through the structural members, but again, going back to this, is there is a very uh, unique Middle Eastern notion to this space where the light comes through these cracks. And you know, again, light is intense there, so you want to control it. And when you actually walk in this lobby, it just, uh, it's breathtaking, not because it's tall, but actually, there is a poetry of light in that space where, you know, it's all of its genesis is, is a very analytical and irrational process, but, but yet it's very inspiring. And, um, and that would actually um, conclude this section. And, and throughout this, this building has been recognized uh, and published, uh, and we do uh, appreciate uh, CTBUH uh, recognizing this building. Um, as a, as a runner-up as well. Uh, the Time magazine in 2011 listed this as the 50 innovation, one of the 50 innovations of the year, but that's not just architecture, anything. So we were really proud of, uh, uh, of uh, accomplishing this uh, very unique uh, structure. Thank you very much.